Okay, guys, believe it or not, but we are finally done, D-U-N, with the Galliano junk pile. Now, you know what? My brain is going, no, don't say that. You're false advertising, whatever, because with a guitar like this, you will never be D-U-N done with it because something is going to happen. And you're going to see at the very end of this episode, something already did happen again, but it gives us an opportunity to junk pile this up. But the moral of the story in episode 13 is this guitar, you will see, was not as fragile put some light on this subject fragile as you thought it might be so let's start this off i was smart enough before we did anything to this car we why am i giving you all credit well some of you sat there and watched all this so that deserve something, but I did a before pan back in front of this guitar, and we're going to start off by doing an after of the same thing. Let's go to the stand right behind me. Will Defendant Galliano Junkpile please take the stand? Well, there we go. How was that for an after? We went through so much of a nightmare on this guitar, including these tuners are worth an incredible amount in comparison to the guitar. We had to wait for that monster truck that's worth $200 with $8,000 of the tires and rims go by. But remember, we had to wait for this leaning tower of pizza sign to come in. And, oh yeah, remember the tuner that we had to get from Ukraine, the comrade? Yeah, I swear. So, at the end of the day, where's all my scrap apparatus? Remember, we had to engage in freeway construction by building this overpass to push the arch back up. I have another guitar. You're, you're going to see, it's supposed to be a, 
Harmony Catalina, which is kind of a, a takeoff on the coloramas that Kay made for Silvertone, but we're going to see a repeat uh, numerous times in some of these guitars that have tone bars. If you don't know what I'm talking about, about tone bars and all the stuff I'm talking about, you need to get up there and click on the playlist for this guitar, and you need to live through the painful hell that everybody else that made it to the end, to the after, and then you can celebrate or shake your head in disgust with the rest of us. But, yeah, any of these guitars that have tone bars, this is going to be an automatic thing for me in the future. I have a, a Harmony Catalina that I'm going to call the House Paint Harmony. Wait till you see this, but it's got a collapsed top and bridge, and it's a mess. So you're going to see this again. Now, at the end of the day, people say, do your guitars actually play? Well, guess what? We saw Bob Log play this in yeah, one of the episodes up there. Maybe, you know what? I'll just put it in right here for you people who are non-believers. Let's do that. Let's take a little break. It's too hot for me to get up and turn off the camera, so I'm just going to sit here and paste that one in. And then while this is going on, I'm going to say, I'm going to come back and act like, okay, here's what's going to happen. Guys, there's nobody out there. We're going to watch the Bob Log thing. I'm going to paste and edit that in. And then I'm going to come back and act like I took a break when in actuality I didn't because I'm just that kind of hard worker. Okay. <laughs> guys how was that see it did play but then again the top collapsed so we had to start over now that we're done let's go see frank goldwasser y'all know frank f-r-a-n-c-k you've seen him on my channel a bunch of times there's going to be a link below he had a cd release just the other day get it just get it don't try to listen to little clips of it here and there just get it Support Frank. There's a link below. Anyway, let's go see what Frank could do with the Galliano junk pile. I'll meet you in Carpinteria, California, cultural capital world. Let's go. Um, Frank, this is probably the worst guitar I have ever handed you. And um, there's not much acoustic quality. I think we're going to have to plug it in right away because there is so much scrap apparatus on the inside. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you might as well just plug it in right away because okay. I don't expect it to, to play acoustically at all.
needs to be played really hard. It's not like... so everybody can see that it's literally coming apart at your abuse. <laughs> no, it was like that before I started. I'm sorry, but but who you know who cares? I mean
You know who would have made this guitar sound great is uh, Ron Thompson. He's not with us anymore, unfortunately. Yeah, that would have been right up his alley. <laughs> wow. There you go. What did I tell you? I told you, Maury, I told you. It really plays. Frank liked it. He really liked it. Anyway, you heard that little clip where Frank said, yeah, this guitar does not like to be played soft. It likes to be played hard. Yeah, that is a fact. Now, are we done? Is this really the after? No, because while Frank was yanking and cranking on this thing, check it out. Look at that. See that gap right there? Right there? Yeah. We're going to go and put some high glue on this, which means I got to put the high glue heater on and get my syringe out. And then I think I'm going to take a piece of this metal that I had left. Where is it? That came from this. And I'm going to do a couple of shelf brackets or maybe some spiral notebook, something or other to seal that up. But hey, guys, the ones of you that have been through this, in all reality, I don't know how many hours I have in this thing. Uh, the main reason I did this guitar was because that looked cool. I couldn't resist it. I OCD'd or ADHD or whatever did, I did out on this thing. But somewhere in this episode, if you go buy a, a, a yard sale catalog guitar, there is something in this playlist up here, and there will be a link to the end, that we've covered. But again, the story is this. This guitar was made about 1940, so it's 80-some years old, and we have done every possible thing you could do. It. It's still pretty durable, and I've reinforced it and stuff, but when you see these guitars, and somebody is asking for $400 or $500 for one, unless it's got pickups and it's all original, or somebody's done a neck reset and this is something you want to keep there's not a lot left on the bone at the market prices for these guitars especially if there's a neck reset to do or the top is caving in or the back or something I think another big takeaway is if the back is loose and the string action is really high or you see the neck twisting when you look down at like this that neck is terrible it doesn't matter like Frank said, who cares? But always look right here, right here, because when the head block starts shifting around, yeah, you're going to end up with the neck angle being pitched this way. Anyway, I could go on and on, but thanks for sticking with me on this one. I've got some good guitars uh, with a lot shorter episodes coming up on how to do some simple fixes. Some of them are better guitars, but Thanks for watching. If you have not given me a like or a subscribe, do that, and I will see you soon with some other junk pile here in the shed.